it's Arthur Godfrey time. <laughs> Arthur Godfrey time with all the little Godfreys, Jeanette Davis, Marshall Young, Frank Saunders, the Jubilaires, and Hank Silverne in the orchestra. And here again is Arthur Godfrey himself. You didn't say that very convincingly, Joe. Isn't that a lovely suit he's wearing? Isn't that pretty? That is a suit, isn't it, Joe? Mm. Take a tip from me, will you? The next time you buy a suit from that mail order outfit, make sure the catalog is 1946. Never mind, no matter what they say, you keep right on wearing it. You remember the other day when I told you about the gorgeous handlebar mustaches that Mike Donovan, our CBS doorman, was growing? Well, he's had to trim them down to the point where they now extend no farther than the eastern and western extremities of his upper lip. On account of no more fancy curlicues for him. I asked him why, and he said, you don't believe a word of this, but to help me. They were growing so fast, they got me eyes and blinded me. <laughs> I guess we've all been mystified at one time or another by some of this legal language that the judges and lawyers throw around. Well, thing is, how do you like that throw a wound? Oh, I'm cute. That's good. That's from listening to you, Joe. Things are going to be different from now on, and naturally enough, Brooklyn is taking the lead in simplifying the terms of the law. A dispute between a judge and a former district attorney in Brooklyn has brought out the following legal opinion. Quote, piffle, unquote. <laughs> And now here are the Jubilees with a little legal advice for me. Shut your mouth, baby. I say, shut your mouth. Ull, ull. Baby, we can have lots of fun, yes, lots of fun, because you are, you're the cutest one. So shut your mouth, baby. We can have lots of fun, yes, lots of fun, because you are, you're the cutest one. You're so sweet, you're so neat, when we walk down the street, everybody holler, mama, you're the cutest one. You're so heavenly, what a break for me, baby, can't you see, I'm in love, love, love. Such a my baby. We can have a lots of fun, yes, a lots of fun, because you are, you're the cutest one. You're so sweet, you're so neat. When we walk down the streets, everybody holler, Mama, hey, hey, baby, you're the cutest one. You're so heavenly, what a break for me, baby, can't you see? I'm in love, 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 hey, such a my baby, such a my baby, yes, we can have a lot of fun, yes, a lot of fun, because you are, you're the cutest one, because you are, you're the cutest one. Yes, 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 yes. Ull, ull. Have you heard that Spike Jones Hawaiian record yet, Hank? They call it, what do they call it, Hawaiian war chant? Well, I haven't either. Oh, that's the most wonderful thing. They start out with this beautiful Hawaiian guitar with birds singing in the background. And pretty soon the fellow says, As our boat sinks in the west and the sun leaves the port or something, he says, we, we come to the island of Lulu. Spelled backward, ul ul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. The other side of it is a honey, too. They do the glow worm. And this soprano gets a hold of a note and holds onto it for about half an hour, you know. Finally, this guy in the background says, Turn the page, you bastard. 
Haven't you always wanted to do that when some soprano had hold of a note and wouldn't let go? <laughs> oh, that's the most beautiful song. I love it. Marshall Young promised us yesterday that he would learn our theme song and sing it today. Have you learned it, sir? I have. I want you folks in the audience to watch Marshall closely while he sings. He goes through all the motions of dramatic expression. He smiles, he scowls, he shakes his head yes, he shakes it no. And all the time he's singing to that microphone, see? From the looks of him, sometimes I think he's going steady with the thing. He's quite thin, Arthur. Oh, you like him skinny, huh? <laughs> Seems like old times Having you to walk with Seems like old times Having you to talk with And it's still a thrill just to have my arms around you, still the thrill that it was the day I found you, seems like old times, dinner dates and flowers, just like old times, staying up for hours, making dreams come true, doing things we used to do, seems like old times, being here with you. Very nice, very nice. Let's keep those words around here now. Every once in a while we ought to sing them. It's a fine thing we don't even know the words to our own theme song. Now we shall hear from the orchestra. My beautiful college alma mater, Grandpa wanted to go to Pitt, but instead he went to pot. Star Day in the Major League, huh? Major Leagues. Professor Godfrey has a slight prediction to make. We'll let all you lucky people in on the result before it happens. You remember what we did with the Lewis Kahn fight, don't you? We called the round in which the knockout would occur. All right, today I will predict that the American League will beat the National League by four runs in nine innings. <laughs> I'll give you three to two on it. Any takers? No takers. Everybody agrees, I guess. <laughs> Who's Mr. Norman Clayton? Is he here? Mr. Norman Clayton of Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Would you care to come forward, sir? I'm told that Mr. Clayton is a school teacher with an exceptionally good baritone voice. 
We'd like very much to meet such a gentleman. Come right up here, sir. Nice to see you. This is Mr. Clayton, ladies and gentlemen. You teach school, Mr. Clayton? That's right. Where, sir? In Milwaukee. I know. High or grammar or what? Oh, I'm in the grammar school. In grammar school? Juniors. What? Junior high, we call it. Junior high. Eighth yeah. grade? Well, uh, seventh. Oh, Our eighth what? is in the high school. Oh, I see. Seventh I grade, huh? I have a glee club in the high school, but that's kind of side dish, you know. What do you teach? Everything? No, uh, I teach English. Of course, the real answer is I teach children. That's what I learned at school. There we go. <laughs> but I won't get technical. Mm. Uh, I went to the seventh grade. You did? Yeah. <laughs> Years passed, but I didn't. <laughs> well, my philosophy is to pass everybody. <laughs> oh, there's that nice fellow, isn't it, son? Huh? It's all right. You're going to pass everybody. No, I haven't failed anybody yet. Uh, Mr. Clayton, uh, what, what would you like to sing for us? We'd love to hear you. Well, I'd like to sing uh, Flow Gently, Sweet Afton. That would be very nice. What key? Key of F. Can you play it, Hank? Do you want one or two verses? Anything you like. Go take the other mic now, where it'll be right up to your size. Nice to hear a good voice once in a while, isn't it? <laughs> well, the next song is written by James Lightley of the immortal songwriting team of Once Over. If you don't like these gags, my writer is between the slopes.
course, it's Arthur Godfrey time with all the little Godfreys. Here again is Arthur Godfrey himself. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. We got another letter from WBRY of Waterbury, Connecticut. It says, Dear Godfrey, what started out as a gag has now become a serious undertaking. The sad rags has begun to flourish in 12 different cities. I've had many cards and letters from people who heard our Thursday broadcast, each one asking to join the SADRAG. You know what that is, the Society for the Abolishment of Disparaging Remarks about Godfrey. says, I really do appreciate the opportunity you gave me last Thursday to publicize the sad rags. The real organization of the group is now underway, and we already have 12 branches and 12 local representatives have been appointed. We're now in the process of issuing membership cards to all those who have shown interest in the club, and we're also contemplating printing a sad rag newsletter, giving each member news about Godfrey and the organization. And the paper shortage and all said, I'd appreciate it if you could send me some biographical data so, so we could work hard on our first issue. Well, I tell you, I was born of poor but dishonest parents. In, um... Well, anyway, we've started our own campaign here in Waterbury to recruit sad rags through the cooperation of E. Christie Irk. Irk, that is. Irk. Radio editor of the Republican American Newspapers. My, my, this is from George Ball. So the sad rags are going strong. They've been swamped with calls. <laughs> I tell you, all you got to do is get two people together and you can organize anything. <laughs> you get three vice presidents together and immediately you have a meeting here in New York. A lunch on the company. Who are all these young fellas up in the front row here today? Who are all you lads with your lunch boxes? <laughs> Where are you going? Who are you? Members of the YMCA. YMCA? All members of what? The team, the swimming team? Day no, it's day camp. Oh, day camp. And you're on your way, are you, this morning? To no, day we camp? Just got here. <laughs> we came from the day camp. <laughs> Asked him, was he on his way? He says, no, he just got here. <laughs> ask a silly question, I get a silly answer. <laughs> well, don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no fooling. Tell me about yourselves. Are you the leader? Well, more or less. I'm a counselor. You're the counselor? And what is your name, please? George Pettipaw. George who? Pettipaw. Pettipaw? And where are you from, George? Forest Hills, Queens. And all of these lads are from there, too? Well, they're all from Queens. All from Queens. And belong to which branch of the Y? The Long Island City branch. Long Island City branch. And you're on your way today somewhere with all that rig. Where? I mean, after you leave here. Oh, when we leave here, we're going to Forest Park. I see. For a day in the woods? Oh, we're going to spend the afternoon there. Oh, that's fine. I hope you have a nice day. It's nice to see you all, you lads. Do you fellas by any chance sing a song together? No, we haven't started that yet. The uh, camp was organized last week. Oh, just organized last week. I see. I see. Well, there's no time better than now to teach him a song. Come on, make him get up here and sing. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, all of you. Come on. Come on up here on the stage. The whole works. They're all about 9, 10, 11, 12 years old here. Come on, lads. You too back there. Come on. You can sing too. You don't belong to that. Oh, all right. Get up over here. <laughs> <laughs> you should see him. <laughs> There's quite a troop here. Joe King is setting the mic out for him. Now, let's see. What, what uh, song shall we sing? Chickory Chee Chala Chala or what? Do you, uh, what song do you know, boys? Huh? All right, we'll teach him one. I know one. All right, what do you know, son? Chickory Chick, do you know it? Okay, get up close to the mic, son. Come on up here now. And a boy. Now tell me what your name is. Joseph. Joseph what? Balson. Balson? Yeah. Joseph Balson? All right, Joe, you lead the whole gang now. Sing Chickory Chick. Come on, let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> he just covered his face with his hands. Oh, don't be, don't be bashful now. Go right ahead. <laughs> 
There you go. That a boy. Go ahead. you to do? You got a treasury in your little outfit? I want you to take this 30 bucks and put it in the treasury for your little baby. Now, boy, you sit down over there. That was very nice to see you. By golly, they're good sports. <laughs> All right, Jeanette. Jeanette Davis, who has a song for us called what, honey? What can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry? Not a thing. Shoot. I don't know why I made you cry. I'm sorry, sweetheart, and yet though you shouldn't be Lenient with me I hope you'll forgive And forget What can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry To you, I'm sorry I didn't mean to ever be mean to you if I didn't care, I wouldn't feel like I do. I was all wrong, but right or wrong, I don't blame you. Why should I take somebody like you and shame you? I know that I made you cry, and I'm so sorry, dear. So what can I say, dear, after I say I'm sorry? I didn't mean to ever be mean to you. If I didn't care, I wouldn't feel like I do. I was all wrong, but right or wrong, I don't blame you. Why should I take somebody like you and shame you? I know that I made you cry, and I'm so sorry, dear. So what can I say, dear? After I say, I'm sorry. Very, very nice, Jeanette. Thank you. I have a note from Fayette Street in Binghamton, New York. It says, Dear Sir, I have a suggestion. Less gab from Godfrey and more songs by Saunders. Thanks very much. Signed, Patricia Seeley, 13 years old. I get it, Pat. You don't have to have a house fall on me. Ul, ul. Frank Saunders. Why? 
white with snow. It's I. news item. After painstaking research in the medical history of George Washington, Dr. Frederick A. Willius and librarian Thomas E. Keyes of the Mayo Clinic have revealed that in the course of his 67-year life, George Washington suffered from measles, diphtheria, smallpox, an infectious disease of uncertain nature, dysentery, malaria, rheumatism, pneumonia, a carbuncle, influenza, conjunctivitis, recurrent headaches, bad eyesight, a tremor of the hands, and decaying teeth. It's no wonder he slept so much, eh? Great day in the morning. He had everything on the map, didn't he? But the funniest story I've heard in a long time is that which... Bernice Hagen sends me. The Los Angeles street, she says, was teeming with people. And the men, evidently late for work, ran past me, she said, dodging swiftly through the throng. And just then the crowd ahead divided as if it had come upon some obstacle. And there was a woman, weighing at least 180 pounds, leaning over, tying her shoelace. Unable to stop, the sprinter had no alternative. He put his hands upon her hips, leapfrogged over, and with an extra spurt, disappeared into the crowd. <laughs> oh, brother. I bet that lady still relates. <laughs> Never did know what that was. <laughs> Can you imagine such a thing? <laughs> Hank, render us the theme in your inimitable fashion. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. I hope you'll tune in to the CBS network. We present the second of our new series of programs called Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. And we've got some great kids for you tonight. Eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. See you then, and until then, this is Arthur Godfrey saying bye bye for all the little Godfreys. This is Mr. Paley's favorite network, CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.